Lindsey Scott Jr. had a long road to get to Incarnate Word, but he made the most of his opportunity this season, breaking the FCS single-season passing touchdown record and becoming the first quarterback in FCS history to throw for 60 touchdowns, finished the year with 4,686 yards. Those 60 touchdowns paired with only eight interceptions, did a really good job protecting the football. And in G.J. Kine's offense, they looked to throw the ball upwards of 30, 40 times a game. So not only did he protect the football, he also displayed his athleticism in that offense as well. Really in the FCS playoffs, really displayed that. 23 rushes, 124 yards in their win against Furman. Came back the next week with 19 rushes, 166 yards, and two touchdowns, one of which you just saw right there. That breakaway speed, that athleticism was on full display. This year he led UIW to a 12-2 record. They made the FCS semifinals and fell to North Dakota State, but finished the year as the number three team in the country. I'm really intrigued to see what Lindsey Scott Jr. does at his pro day, how he looks throwing the ball, and what kind of numbers he puts up in the 40. But I think this is a guy who can make plays at the next level. Princeton wide receiver Andre Yosevash has been one of my favorite receiver prospects in this draft class for a while now. A guy who's really stood out over the past two years and had a lot of success in Princeton's offense this year. First team all Ivy with 66 receptions, 943 yards, and seven touchdowns. How about in the springtime when, when he's a 2022 All-American and three-time Ivy League champion on Princeton's track and field team, three-time champion in the Hapathlon at the Ivy League ranks. Been having a really good week at the Senior Bowl. It's gotten a lot of buzz. Um, something that a lot of people expected that he could be a small school riser down at the Senior Bowl. I also think that he'll put up good numbers at the Combine. Like I said, track star, there's rumors that he could be in that 4-2, 4-3 range in the 40. I think if that's the case, he would definitely soar. I had the opportunity to speak to Andre after a Princeton game this year about some of the accolades and recognition he's received. Let's see what he had to say. Uh, it's really great. I mean, it's just like a culmination of all the work that I've put in and like obviously the, the coaches help me to be in that position and all the players around me. But I kind of just focus on the game and trying to, when I go into the game, I kind of just know what I can do and then everything else will fall into place. Let's look at another FCS quarterback out of Fordham University, Tim Demorak. Put up video game numbers this season, 4,891 yards and 56 touchdowns. Leaves Fordham with the all-time career passing touchdown record, 123. That's the most in Patriot League history, too. Fifth-year starter, really played there for a long time, had a lot of game reps, led them to the FCS playoffs this year, really helped elevate that Fordham program to new heights. Um, I'm intrigued by Demorad. He's looked good in some of these all-star games, played in the Shrine Bowl last night, played in the Hula Bowl a few weeks ago, had a long 70-plus yard touchdown to UAB's receiver Trey Shopshire. Um, I'm intrigued by Tim Demorad. I think he's got an accurate deep ball, uh, quality arm strength to make any throw on the field, and I think that this is a guy who, who could be an interesting prospect come training camp. From the Patriot League's Offensive Player of the Year, let's head to their Defensive Player of the Year. Malik Ham, defensive end, outside linebacker out of Lafayette. Eight and a half sacks, 12 and a half tackles for loss this season. Another one, a five-year starter who recorded 32 sacks and 50 tackles for loss in his career. Position versatility, he can play on the line, lined up with his hand in the dirt, also can drop in coverage, has a lot more athletic ability than you would expect for a real true pass rusher. I spoke to Malik after the game at Penn this year. Let's hear what he had to say about his versatility. Yeah, I mean, uh, at the end of the day, like, uh, you want to be able to play wherever you want, or however many places you can. Like, you know, your best uh, tool is just to be useful. And uh, I just think the more I can do, you know, on the defensive side of the ball, like whether that's covering, whether that's rushing pass, or you know, being able to stop the run, that's just a testament to, you know, my coaches putting me in the right places to make sure that I'm successful here and to be able to look forward to the next level to, you know, be able to make those plays out there. Celestin Haba, defensive end, edge rusher, stand-up pass rusher from Texas A&M Commerce. A guy who went first team all Southland this year and Commerce's first season as a D1 program. Finished the year with a pass rush grade from PFF of 90.7, top three in all of the FCS. Intrigued by Haba, he has an outstanding arsenal of pass rush moves and really a great motor and get off to pair with it. Me and Jovan had the opportunity to talk to Haba the other day on the TSL podcast. Let's hear what he had to say about his get off. But I feel like my biggest strength is my get off because it all starts with the get off. If you don't have a great get off, it's going to be kind of not a long game for you, but it's going, it's going to be a little more difficult because the game is so fast now. So you have to play fast. And I feel like my get off is, is real good and gives me advantage against competitors because I feel like rather than kicking out their stance, now they're basically chasing. That gives me a two-way mm -hmm. go. Now I can counter. Now I can beat you with speed. And 
and so forth. So I feel like my get off is one of my best attributes. Jackson State linebacker Aubrey Miller was the SWAC Defensive Player of the Year this season after he recorded 117 tackles, 12 tackles for loss, and five forced fumbles. The SEC transfer from Missouri also led the SWAC in 2021 with 109 tackles. Been making a lot of buzz down at the Senior Bowl. Has put up some good practice days there. Looking forward to seeing him play in the game tomorrow. And while we're talking about Jackson State, let's look at someone who played yesterday in the Shrine Bowl, receiver Dallas Daniels. Daniels was a JUCO product, began his career at two junior colleges, started out at Arizona Community College, and then went down to Northeastern Oklahoma A&M before heading to Western Illinois to begin his D1 career at the FCS ranks. Had some success there, but really broke out last year with Jackson State. When he transferred there and joined Coach Prime and Shadur Sanders and just that offense as a whole, he really elevated his game, put himself on the map with 62 receptions, 692 yards, and six touchdowns. In particular, a seven reception, 120-yard game with three touchdowns versus Grambling. Really caught my eye. That's when he really put himself on the map with that game. This is a quick, shifty route runner. Creates a lot of separation for himself in his routes. Really love the way that he finds ways to get open. And also a guy who I think has a lot of upside in his yards after catch ability at the next level. I think he's someone who can make people miss um, and, and really make plays at the next level. So Dallas Daniels and Aubrey Miller, two guys I'm really intrigued with. Also have to mention Tony Gray, Jackson State's left tackle, did a good job anchoring their offensive line. Dealt with some injuries this year, but still is a very interesting draft prospect. And then their top corner, Isaiah Bolden, someone who really was a notable player out there and, and made a lot of plays. Um, Coach Prime's top corner in, in one of the top defenses in the country. Two guys you also have to look at as well as draft prospects. North Dakota State offensive lineman Cody Mock was a first-team FCS All-American this year and is one of the more popular draft prospects from the FCS ranks. He's an athletic, physical blocker. He was recruited North Dakota State as a tight end and wound up gaining 75 pounds during his time with the Bison. Currently stands at 6'6", six six, 303 pounds. Really has a knack for finishing his blocks. Has that extra strength, motivation at the end of his blocks. Is always playing through the whistle. Has had a nice week this week at the Senior Bowl. Has displayed some position versatility. Um, played inside at guard and center. Anchored North Dakota State's line, protected Cam Miller at left tackle for the past few years. But teams love the fact that he can snap the ball, that he can step inside and play inside. I think Cody Mock has first-round upside, especially with what he's shown this week at the Senior Bowl. Looking forward to see how his NFL career pans out. Let's stay right on North Dakota State's offensive line. Let's move over one position to left guard, Nash Jensen. You can go back and watch him in the Cody Mock clip. He looks good in there, too. But Jensen's an interesting draft prospect in his own right. Was just down at the NFL PA Bowl and looked great in it. Love his athleticism. Love that clip where he gets to the next level against South Dakota State in the FCS National Championship. Also just a, a physical, strong run blocker. Plays in a power run offense. That North Dakota State offense, uh, they don't, you know what I mean? They don't sugarcoat things. They get right after it in the run game, certainly. Have some unique options for their quarterback, Cam Miller. I'm sure you've seen that in, in both these Cody Mock and Nash Jensen clips. But... Jensen is a powerful, you know, big mauler in the run game. I think his physicality, his size, his ability to, like I said, be an athlete, get to that second level with ease, and also just how comfortable he looks when he's pulling, when he's in space. I'm intrigued by Nash Jensen. I definitely would take a flyer on him. We're staying in the Dakotas, going south, looking at Tucker Craft, South Dakota State's tight end. Hope you liked that FCS National Championship game. More film coming. Two-time FCS All-American Kraft was, and this is a guy who already has a lot of draft buzz, kind of similar to Cody Mock. Uh, Tucker Kraft was Dane Bugler in the Athletics' number five tight end, and earlier this year, Todd McShay had him as high as his number two tight end behind Michael Mayer. This is a guy who really could. I mean, it, it's hard to kind of predict where he's going to go in the draft. I'd have a hard time seeing him fall to the third round, though. I think he's a second, maybe even late first round pick, but probably in that second round, day two range. Missed some time this year, missed some time early this year. I think after, around the second game of the year, he missed some time with injury. Um, full season in 2021, 65 receptions, 773 yards, and six touchdowns. And that injury didn't affect him enough for him to miss the All-American team, for him to have a huge impact in the FCS National Championship game. Let's start talking about some of these blocks you guys are seeing. He is absolutely blowing up DBs and even down linemen. He, he's making his impact there as well. But I, I, I'm really intrigued to see what he kind of what numbers he puts up at the NFL Combine. I think he'll have a good bench, and I think he's going to be an, a, a good athlete. I think he's going to put up a good 40 time, a good broad jump. Intrigued by Tucker Craft, to say the least. Titus Leo is a versatile defensive end outside linebacker from Wagner College who wound up winning the NEC's Defensive Player of the Year 
twice in back-to-back -back seasons, was this year's Defensive Player of the Year after recording 65 tackles, 14 tackles for loss, and three sacks. Had seven sacks back in 2021 when he won the award. Really explosive, quick, twitchy defender. Really talented pass rusher who can get after the quarterback. Is going to be a speed rusher at the next level. Like I mentioned, versatile guy. Could be that 3-4 Sam linebacker, 4-3 hand in the turf defensive end. Was actually recruited to Wagner as a wide receiver. Played receiver in high school and that outside linebacker safety hybrid uh, on defense. I'm excited to see his numbers at his pro day. What he puts up at Wagner's pro day. What kind of numbers he can put up there in the 40, the broad jump. I think this is a guy who's a really intriguing athlete who has a lot of positive traits for the next level. McClendon Curtis is a six foot six offensive guard from Tennessee, Chattanooga, the same school that Patriots first round pick Cole Strange played at last year. Curtis has looked good so far at the Senior Bowl. Let's do some quick hitter FCS and even lower ranked prospects here. Started out with Isaiah Land, linebacker from Florida A&M, down at the Senior Bowl right now. They also have wide receiver Xavier Smith, who's made a lot of plays there for years. Delaware, Nolan Henderson, their quarterback, and their top receiver Thyrick Pitts. Felt like that duo made a lot of plays there for years, both heading to the NFL. Harvard, you guys know I love my Ivy League football. Truman Jones, first team all Ivy defensive end. And Aiden Bourget, their running back, was just down making plays at the CGS All-Star game. Heading down to Mammoth, Owen Wright, talented short yardage back, was in a really good trio of running backs at Mammoth. And I wound up having the opportunity to watch a Mammoth game this year. They faced Rhode Island and URI has four draft prospects off the bat. Let's start with Kasim Hill, their quarterback, a Maryland transfer. Marquise DeShields, a local guy, Overbrook, New, Overbrook, New Jersey product. Uh, their running back, Ed Lee, slot receiver for them. And then also Jordan Jones, who was just down at the Hula Bowl, had six interceptions back in 2021. Their corner, um, Shaq Davis, South Carolina State receiver, down at the Shrine Bowl right now, making a name for himself. Another guy who's making a name for himself at the Shrine Bowl is Colby Soresdale, William & Mary's offensive tackle. Love what he's put on film in the one-on-one -on -one portions. Kalen Newton, Cam Newton's brother, uh, started his career as a quarterback down at Auburn, currently at William & Mary, similar to Soresdale, as a receiver, like his game a lot. And then I mentioned Jadakiss Bonds in one of my earlier videos. Feel free to check that out from back in October.